Something really exciting is happening in the world of aviation. After years of anticipation, Airbus is finally starting to deliver its A321 XLR. Now, Airbus has been building the A320 family for decades, and it's arguably the most successful commercial program of all time. But the XLR is poised to take the program to a whole new level. Today, with the help of my friends at Airbus, I'm going to take you inside the factory where these planes are being built. And I'm going to show you exactly how one of these magnificent aircraft is made from start to finish. So then, how does Airbus build its A320 family of jets? Let me explain. Now, the process of building an A320 starts months, if not years, before the plane is actually delivered. And it starts in a place that you might not expect, an old converted hangar located in the heart of Airbus's Hamburg campus, known as the CDC. The Customer Definition Center in Hamburg, or the CDC, is a one-stop shop where customers that have bought an airplane can come to complete the definition of the cabin of their aircraft. We have mock-ups, a wide variety of augmented and virtual reality tools with which we can guide the customers through the catalog, allow the customers to express their creativity or to find something that really suits the brand of their airline. Now, I can't stress enough just how cool this place is. And it's also massive. After all, designing your cabin is about so much more than just picking your seats. They would start with layout optimization, selecting the seats they want, the seat pitch, how far apart they are from one another, picking the overhead storage compartments, picking things like the details of where the placards are, what types of placards you have. All of those little details that express the brand of the airplane, they will go through that line by line, piece by piece, until they're happy with everything. Then once they're done with that, once the layout is frozen, we would then switch our focus to designing the lighting for the airplane, so all of the software defined functions of the airplane will be done at the end. Branding of the airline into the lights, yeah, sunrise and sunset scenarios, celebratory lighting scenarios, which would reflect the branding of the airline very strongly as well. Sure. Suffice it to say, this is a very intensive process. For a narrow-body aircraft like the A320, customers can expect to spend about a week at the CDC, and typically they have to come back for return visits. So in order to help lighten the load, Airbus supports its customers by offering a really unique blend of craftsmanship and technology. Normally we would start the process with virtual or digital tools. That allows you to filter through a lot of options very quickly. It allows you to throw away things that you don't like very quickly. And then we will build mock-ups of the critical aspects of the down-selected ones so the airlines can see what it is that they're going to get, touch it, sit on it, and experience what it's like in a real cabin. All of this is designed to be very easy to, to move around or to change. Okay, so once a customer leaves the CDC, its cabin design is locked. Now comes the hard part, building the plane itself. Now, while the A320 family is assembled in Hamburg, its individual components are built all across Europe. For instance, the nose is built in France, the wings are built in the UK, and the horizontal stabilizer is built in Spain. All of those disparate parts have to get to Hamburg, and that's usually done via Beluga. Airbus's own supersized cargo transporter. But while parts come from all across Europe, there are a few critical ones that are actually manufactured in Hamburg, specifically the center and rear fuselage. And that's done in a process known as structural assembly. So this is a structural assembly hangar, and we are producing the section 15 and 17 within this hangar itself. For some context here, sections 15 and 17 refer to different parts of the A320's fuselage. Section 15 is the center fuselage, and section 17 is the rear fuselage. And these barrel sections are made of these large aluminum sheets that either come from suppliers or other Airbus sites. Most of the parts are either delivered by Beluga, a lot of them also by truck, and they are always transported uh, on this floor via our rail system into these specific stations. Our so-called gripper, it's a crane, it's pretty unique because it is able to uh, take hold on all sections, the 15, the 17, and that is really what we are doing in the structure assembly, producing sections and producing afterwards the entire aft fuselage. Now something that I immediately noticed about this structural assembly hangar 
is the lack of robots. This does not look like an automobile plant where robots are doing 90% of the work. These planes are still built largely by hand. Over the years, Airbus has been very intentional in how it's integrated robotics into the process. And instead of being used to outright replace workers, they're used to support them. In this hangar, we have two types of robots. The first one we see here, it's called the Light Flex Track. This robot helps us to drill all the holes that you can see here along the longitudinal joints. If you put two shelves above each other, this robot drills through them. And it's approximately 1,200 drillings that this machine is performing for us. And what we perform afterwards is the riveting process. We use them in a combination with our workforce together. So they do not perform solemnly on their own. Building an aircraft here is still something we do with our own people. Now, once these sheets have been riveted together into barrel sections, it's on to MCA. So MCA stands for Major Component Assembly. So what's happening here is we take the sections that we just saw over in the section assembly, we line them up one after the other, and we move them together, and we perform the drilling of the orbital joint here with our KUKA robots. The KUKA drills the holes and also places the rivets that'll hold sections 15 and 17, and also section 18, 19 together. Section 18, 19 comes from a supplier. And once these sections are mated, the A320's rear fuselage has effectively taken shape. But I just have one question. Why is it green? That's not the natural color of aluminum, right? When you fly with an aircraft at 30,000 feet, it gets really, really cold. Once you land, maybe in Arizona or in Texas or somewhere sunny, you know, the aircraft heats up really fast and this creates a lot of water. And to protect our aluminum from corrosion, we always apply a primer to, to protect this. Okay, so that's structural assembly. Sheets of metal come together to form sections of the fuselage. From here, we move on to stage two, equipment installation. And this is where the plane starts to get its guts. We install here um, all the windows, the passenger doors and the cargo doors. We have a mechanical system installation like uh, air conditioning pipes, riser ducts and so on. And we have um, electrical system installation. Uh, so you see here, uh, different cables, bundles uh, for data, for power, and so on. This is easily one of the most complex parts of the assembly process. The number of parts that need to be installed here is enormous. It's really no wonder then that the rear fuselage can spend up to two weeks in this hangar. That said, Airbus has been building A320s for decades, and they've found some clever ways to make the process smoother. So we're here in the new hangar for the uh, A321XLR and we have taken a lot of our experiences from uh, all these years. One uh, element is uh, the smart tools mm. so we can uh, teach uh, the tool um, the right torque which we have to use, we can uh, understand where this tool is located and of course we have put uh, a lot into digitalization. We have this automated uh, logistics system, it's, it's increasing our efficiency uh, because we, we force um, the optimal uh, sequence of the installation. Now, smart tools and digitalization is nice and all, but by far the coolest tool that Airbus uses during equipment installation is the sequencer, which is essentially the world's biggest, most high-tech vending machine. This is a so-called sequencer, part of our automated logistics system. Very high number of our boxes will go into this shelf, and then from here, the, we'll deliver the material to the right point of delivery, mm -hmm. so to the station where the installer is using the part. So this employee uh, has no reason to walk around and look for the material. It's, sure. it's there and in the optimal uh, sequence. Okay, so once the rear fuselage is completely kitted out, it's finally ready to meet up with the nose, the wings, and the other parts that were flown in on Beluga. And at long last, final assembly can commence. So this hangar that we're in today, this is our flow line, 265 meters long, 66 meters wide. It's a huge hangar. It's one of uh, around about 100 buildings that we have here on, uh, on site in Hamburg. Mm. We have around about 15, 16,000 people here working, which is about the same as a small town. Here we can build everything from A318s 319s, 320s and 321s to meet the 
demand that we currently have to deliver these aircraft. The final assembly hall itself is composed of four distinct stations. Let's start at the back. First station here, you can see we have the forward part of the uh, aircraft, so the cockpit and forward part of the fuselage, and we're mating that with the rear part of the fuselage. Front part comes from St. Nazaire, the rear part comes from Hamburg. Behind these uh, stations, we have two large hangar doors, and these uh, parts are brought into the hangar with a dedicated uh, moveaboard jig from our ground support crews. Uh, we're connecting these two parts of the aircraft with about 3,000 rivets but before we put them together we make sure that we put the big monuments in things like um, uh, toilets or uh, galleys it makes sense to put it uh, in the aircraft when we have a big hole either end when the plane is finished at this station it effectively looks like a giant green cigar of course in order to fly it's gonna need wings so once we put the two parts of the fuselage together it's actually transported from the first station to this one with a big crane uh, we lower it into this station and this is one of the most critical stations we have here on the uh, final assembly line because it's where we install the wings uh, onto the aircraft. We install with um, around about 1,200 uh, high strength titanium rivets per wing. Mm. The wing at this stage uh, comes from Broughton and weighs around about four and a half tons. Now on average, a plane will spend roughly two days at this station. That might seem like a long time, but it's absolutely critical that technicians take their time to get this step right. It's a highly critical, highly sensitive, and highly measured process. Uh, we have tolerances of around about a tenth of a millimeter. We install the wing with a computer-operated um, measuring device, drill off the holes that we need, remove the wings again, clean them up, we put sealant in between the joints, and then move it back again into exactly the same position um, before we rivet it all together. It's not only the installation of the wings that we perform here, we also install our sharklets. We install the landing gear. By the time that we've finished all of the activities, we remove the jigs and the aircraft is then rolling on its own wheels for the first time. Where does it roll to? Well, right on to the next station in the flow line. Now, remember all the hard work that the airline did at the beginning of the process? Designing the cabin, picking the seats, etc.? Well, it's at this station that that vision finally starts to take shape. Right here at this station, we really start to put the cabin together. Mm. Apart from that there are no seats inside, it would look very much like a cabin that you see every day when you fly this aircraft. Mm. We're putting the uh, ceiling panels in, the wall panels, and we're starting to look at the carpet as well. And it also gets the vertical tailplane, the horizontal tailplane, and also the rear tail cone with the APU installed. Now, by this stage, the plane is really starting to look like a complete A320, both inside and out. And so the last station, the final stop on the flow line, helps to validate that it behaves like an A320 too. Really, at this station, the testing of the aircraft really takes a, a priority. So we are checking the um, flight controls. The aircraft uh, has all the doors rigged so that it's uh, sealed, and we're checking that the pressure is, can be held inside the aircraft. Airbus has a clear policy. We build the safest aircraft uh, in the safest environment, and this is something that we all know about and uh, live here in Hamburg. Yeah. So our quality teams are checking every single process step by step, and before we clear the zone or clear the area, it's absolutely checked to make sure it conforms um, with our very high uh, tolerances and requirements. Once all these checks are complete, the plane has officially finished final assembly. From here, the plane gets a fresh coat of paint, it gets its engines, seats, and cockpit installed, it conducts flight testing, and it's eventually handed off to the customer. So that's about it. That's how Airbus builds an A320 from start to finish. Now, if you want to fly in an A320 yourself, well, they're really not that hard to find. Literally hundreds of airlines fly them, and hundreds if not thousands of them are in the air at any given time. Huge thanks to Airbus for allowing me to share this incredible process with all of you, and until I see you again, don't forget to look up.